Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Passion and Purpose podcast. It's Louis Giglio, and I'm so excited about the conversation that we're going to have today with a new friend of mine, relatively new in the last few years, someone whose um, reputation arrived to me a few years ago repeatedly from the 20-somethings and 30-somethings that I hang out with and work around, and finally got the chance to meet him and you know, just as advertised, I was blown away. And the thing that struck me the most about him was he has this his own rhythm. And I like that. I'm a connoisseur of good communicating and preaching. And I don't know, there was something about the tone, the content, the person, the whole the whole situation mm. that just felt fresh to me and new and then got a chance to meet him, hang out, got a chance to know his wife. And um, Shelly and I have gotten a chance to be around them some, and it's been really, really fantastic. So please welcome, if you would, the pastor of Harris Creek in Waco, Texas, the author of Why Do I Do What I Don't Want to Do? Maybe the most universal title <laughs> in all of literature yeah, right now. Exactly. But welcome, Jonathan Pacluda, to the Passion and Purpose yeah. podcast. I'm so glad to have you on today. Pumped. Uh, it's so great to be on, and I'm going to have the most difficult time not just uh, celebrating all the things about you that I have <laughs> celebrated for years and years and years from afar and, um, you know, doing ministry together, if I can even be so bold as to say that, is quite literally a dream come true. I mean, literally. And so I am humbled to be on, I'm encouraged to be on, and just so thankful for you. Well, the feeling is mutual, and I have a left turn in this podcast, something we've really never done in a Passion and Purpose podcast. But I've got an item here, uh, JP, that I'd like to get in view of all the folks who are being able to watch the podcast. And if you're listening, I'm so sorry about this whole section because you're going to be like, what are you doing? I can't see you right now. And I can't see what you're talking about. But this arrived um, <laughs> at Passion <laughs> uh, awesome. recently. And it is possibly one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, we... We plugged it in, and once we plugged it in, I was like, okay. So this lives on the credenza in my office upstairs, and I just love walking in every day to it. I don't know exactly what it is, and I don't know exactly how old it is. I have no idea where you found it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you had to retrofit it. It was a, a really yeah. kind gesture. You're a, a gift giver. I've learned that about you right away. Yeah. And uh, tell, the, tell everybody and tell me, what, uh, are, what are we means... looking at here? <laughs> that means so much to me that you just showed the world that. So, um, yeah, I mean, okay. Wait a minute. Can we take the lights in here just a little bit? Uh, just, no, the, the broadcast <laughs> yeah, the, light just for a second. See the, the rocket. Yeah, it, the, it really needs a little more vibe than and, we've got going all on right now. Glory, so we're going to yeah. take the the television factor down and the, the lamp Louis, factor you have, up. You have no <laughs> idea how hard I worked on that, that thing. <laughs> I've had it for a year. And, uh, and so the way that that came to be, because I, I know that you have an affinity for space and so much of what you've said through the years uh, that has stirred my affections for God has, have been things that you've learned along the way in, in science and, um, and specifically in our universe and in space. And so I was on tour with a mutual friend of ours, Annie F. Downs. We did a, a compassion tour and, um, and we in Houston we went by NASA and there was this tour of NASA that we did. And we were there with an astronaut's wife and her husband was on the space station. And, um, and she said, let me, she said, let me call him. Like he would want to talk to y'all. <laughs> she uses her cell phone. And I don't, some people have been blown away by this. Some people have been like, well, of course, you know, the satellites are in space. I, Listen, I don't, the, it was, the new generations are less and less impressed, JP. Well, it blew my mind that she used her cell phone and called one of, I think, six humans not on Earth. Her husband was living on the International Space Station, and he had been there for a while. And um, and they and so she, he's on speakerphone, and he's talking to us. And so I am talking through a cell phone <laughs> to a man who is in space. And so after you, you uh, allowed me to be with passion last year, I thought, man, what, I was just racking my brain, you know, it's like, what, what is a gift? And so I called her and I said, Hey, can you give me an idea of a friend who, um, who just enjoys learning about space? And she had said, you know, we tracked down this, um, this lamp 
that was uh, put together when, you know, Russia, the Russian, it was made to commemorate the Russian cosmonauts. And I'm not even sure I'm saying that correctly. And, uh, and she said, but you'll have to outfit it, you know, retrofit it for American plugs. <laughs> so I was like, that, that's a project that sounds right up my alley. So I, I, um, I, I never really found quite the perfect light to go in there, but we, we got one in there. Man, so. it is, uh, oh, I, I appreciate the story even more now. It's so incredible. Thank you. <laughs> it is going yeah. to, um, you know, this is a make it or break it, uh, kind of gift. This either goes in the, in the, in the bin, <laughs> that's, a, that's what or I said. It goes on the credenza. Exactly what I <laughs> there said. is no middle that's ground ex- with this lamp. That is that is exactly what I told Hannah. I was like, "Hey, he's either going to appreciate this, or this is going to be one of those things where he opens up and he's like, what a weirdo.' Yeah, I wish <laughs> you could. Um, I wish we could get close up, uh, kind of identifying some of the iconic Russian things that are on these little pictures down mm-hmm. around the bottom. Um, yeah. Just phenomenal. And I, in the same way, you know, I had a friend on the station for. A bit might be talking about the same person. I don't know who uh, his wife that you ran into, but uh, Shane Kimbrough was on the station for a minute, and he would call pretty consistently. And you know the the pattern here in Atlanta, JP was so weird while he was on the station. I mean, he came directly over our house once every six wow. weeks. And if you haven't seen the space station with your own eyes, you've got to do this. It is like stunning. People are like, well, how do you know if it's the space station or if it's just a satellite or a plane? It's like, oh no, you'll know when it's the space station. And he would call pretty regularly and the calls would come through um, uh, Houston, uh, through the space center. And there was about eight numbers that they have in this rotation. So it could be any different 281 number wow. and I would save it. I saved them all. They're still all saved in my phone. Shane wow. in space is what they're all <laughs> saved under. That is so wild. Like, this is the call I need to take. So I left a lot of meetings like, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need to take this call. But it is kind of so stunning uh, how small the world gets in moments like that and how advanced technology is. And it is kind of crazy that a lot of people don't even believe we went to space, JP. And they certainly yeah, aren't heard. impressed that somebody would call you on a on <laughs> cell phone. It's a it's a thing because we we have a, a residency program here, and so we have eight residents right now where they they come on staff for ten years, I'm mean, ten months rather, ten months, and we invest in them. Ten years is a and, quite uh, a residency. Yeah, I was like, that, 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 would be, that would be interesting. So they're 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 here for ten months, and I asked them um, that independent of each other, hadn't had a conversation. Do you believe that we've landed on the moon? Six of the eight strong like absolutely did not believe we landed on the moon and i thought about just the next generation and and how untrusting they are um you know they live in the 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 fake news the 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 dupes on amazon everything's replicated artificial intelligence they're looking at at um you know images and videos now that never actually happened they were just created by technology and so more than ever, I think they're, they're really untrusting of all things and, and probably at the same time, simultaneously looking for something that they can stand firm on, uh, something that's unchanging, something that's consistent and trustworthy. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about that later. I got a report recently from one of our partners in, uh, in um, our organization, an outside partner who'd done some studying on Gen Z and and it was so um, encouraging in some ways and so discouraging. But a lot of what it was saying was what you're saying. They don't trust any institution, certainly not any institutional information organization, and not really even influencers anymore because they know the influencers are all getting paid to do what they're yeah. doing. And so you've got to crowdsource all of your knowledge. And that's how you know everything that you know. It's by peer sourcing. And it's just a different world to live in, and it's happening so fast. If anybody's listening today and you're kind of, uh, you got your ear to the ground, I know you understand, like I do and JP does, that this is all happening in real time very, very yeah. fast. And it's going very to impact fast. how we do everything that we do in terms of communicating the gospel and building the church. And I want to talk about that a little bit later. But I wanted to start off by just celebrating uh, something that we both got to be a part of a few weeks ago. Uh, in Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, called Passion 2024. And I know, because we talked uh, recently a few days ago, that we're still very much being impacted by 
this gathering and the way God moved in this gathering. And it's hard to really put words around it still for me, but talking about, you know, going into space, I would say what happened in the bins was pretty otherworldly. And I have experienced few moments like that in my life. And there were several of them in those days. Talk about being at Passion this year. It's your second time to be there. And talk about what you experienced at Passion 2024. Yeah, I came back and and I just I, rem- I woke up the next day, and and I had this feeling of um, lonely, and um, and and I know that's a really weird place to start because it was the most amazing time, and I think that's the problem is is I've really struggled to put words around it, and and a lot of times. Um, I, I won't say a lot of times. This has happened very few times, candidly, to me, where I've I've sensed the spirit, the the supernatural, uh, so palpable, so tangible that it felt like there were not words in the English language to mm-hmm. appropriately describe. And so, what happened is when I got back and people said, "How was it?" question mark They said, "How was passion?" question mark You just got back from passion. How was it? that I didn't know what to say to them because I knew that whatever I was about to say w- would would be less than fully honest because it's like I didn't have the yeah, words right. to say what they needed to hear. And so I could say things like, it was awesome. It was incredible. Man, I really saw God move there. And and yet all of that would feel, uh, you know, I'd be left wanting. It, it wasn't enough. And I woke up the next day and I just, I, I, I sensed there was like this feeling and a, or an emotion. I was trying to put words to it. And and I texted you because I was like, I just wish everyone was here in the living room. <laughs> you know, we, we um, and I, and I, you know, it's interesting because I, I think I said in that text, not knowing that you had used this language before, but I was like, it, that was a mountaintop experience, you know, and, and, um, and I said maybe something about coming down, and and you said yeah, you know a lot of uh, a lot of people die on the descend, and so we, we need to. I don't. I, you you just had this phrase after that that I was like, wow, that is so appropriate. And then I realized that was something that you've led people through before, and so I was like, man, that those words are very appropriate for what I'm feeling right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel the same way, and I. I was telling you the other day that, you know, over the decades of passion, it's been true many, many times that you get home and somebody's like, hey, how was it? And you're like, uh, never mind. And that's not a yeah. egotistical statement at all. It's just that there are moments in life that it's hard to translate to someone who wasn't there. And what's frustrating, JP, is that when you do, you say, well, this happened or this happened or God moved like this. And they're like, Oh, that's cool. And you're like, no, it wasn't cool. It was, it wasn't cool. It was, I don't know what right word to use, but it wasn't cool. And then you try to say something else. And then this happened. They're like, man, that's sweet. And you're like, no, it was not sweet. (laughs) It was something otherworldly that we were a part of in that space. And uh, on the last day of passion, a lot of people probably heard this by now, but there was just a, a little space where, everybody got out of the way and God got in the way and in the midst of worship, all the people leading just got out of the way. Nobody was leading anymore. Most people were face down on the ground and God just moved and stirred. And I, we were sitting in a section together, you and myself and some of the other speakers and leaders and worship leaders and some friends of ours that were there. And I'm watching people who've been in ministry for 40 years, who preached all over the world, just sobbing um, at the weight of God's glory and at the weight of his holiness in that moment. And I I don't ever want to get over it. And a few days ago, we did something kind of unprecedented for Passion even. We had a Zoom call of all the speakers who were at Passion. So we had a couple of those last year. We did an offsite retreat where we all went to Austin together, prayed, got our hearts aligned, sought the Lord. And then here we were six, six weeks after, and we rallied for a Zoom call. It was supposed to last an hour, I think. And about an hour and a half later, nobody wanted to get off the call. And Christine Keynes and Patagonia and you're in a hotel room. You just got into Tallahassee for Unite FSU and uh, Monica's at home in Waco and uh, the Lescos are somewhere up in Montana and um, the Stewart's in D.C. and Earl and Onika are in Dallas. And we're all on this call with Brad and Misty are there, Shelly. And um, it, we needed it. 
we needed it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. Levi texted me when it was over and he said, I just didn't want that to end. I didn't want that yeah. to end. Why mm-hmm. did we feel like that? Yeah. I, 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 what, what that call did for me is it let me know I wasn't crazy because I've, I've had all these, these feelings and emotions and I, and you know, you, you know, everybody is in a different city. And so then you just kind of think, oh man, maybe everybody just went back to normal and got back and uh, you know, is it okay? I'm having a hard time going back to normal, if you will. And, and, uh, and when we got on that call and then we talked about that moment, you know, and as you were just describing it right now, it's like, I can see it. I mean, I can see the camera pan and I can see the crowd just in some, some feeble voice, holy, holy. And just like that, just spreading like wildfire in, in a stadium amongst 50, 60,000 people. And, uh, and just, just their voices lifted high. And you said, you know, no one was leading. And I think that's a big takeaway. And I really want to talk with you about this. If, if. If you'd be willing, I'd love to have you uh, on our podcast and just to interview you on leadership, because I've always said, uh, you know, and I say always, I mean, I I became a Christian later in life, but since following Jesus and reading the Bible for, you know, for myself, I see how, how clearly the scripture defines leadership as, as service, you know, Mark 10, 45, for the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. And that's what I've experienced. Every single time I've come close to passion is the kind of leadership that just serves, that just is, is there to, to facilitate people using their gifts and, and talents, their God-given gifts and talents to, to bring worship and glory and honor to God. And, and that moment, that Agnes Day moment, it was that so palpable where Christian, I don't know that I've ever used the word palpable <laughs> in my life and, you know, many times on this podcast because I'm just, again, words fail me. But he just backed off and and the crowd took over and better said the spirit of God yeah. took over through people, through vessels, and we're singing this. And the best way that I could explain it to people is another time that I've experienced the supernatural was at Asbury and, you know, what is affectionately called the Asbury Revival. And I, I drove up there, I was in Nashville and we drove up uh, to Kentucky and, and we went inside and I was like, there, okay, I get it. You know, there's, there's a four hour long line outside and, and people are coming from all over the country and just to experience whatever the spirit of God is doing in there. We went in, we sang the same song in the same key. And I don't know if that's relevant or not. I just know that God often works in rhythms. And, um, and it was, and I, and I remember thinking like this, like I am encountering the spirit of God right now. And, um, and that happened and it did something to me. It's like, almost like I left a part of me in there. Well, what happened, and, and Asbury was, is really the opposite of passion in a number of ways that there was, there was no projector. There was no, there was nothing very technolo- technologically advanced in there at all. And then the way that passion started under your leadership was this stripped down kind of, Hey, I just want to go back to the heart of worship. I just, I want to, I want to remove all the lasers and lights and smoke and, and everything screens for a minute and just come back to the heart of worship. And it seemed like to me, having experienced all of it, that God honored that in a way that in this moment towards the end of our time together, that there was just this prolonged, condensed, really wow. concentrated um, experience. And I, you know, I'd say experience because mm. I don't have a better word uh, of the supernatural. And it was almost like the all of the the you know days and days and days of Asbury. Almost it was almost like condensed into this twenty five minutes. And I just, I remember standing there and swaying and singing and just, you know, like, like I, I just want to wake up in glory right now. I don't want to move. I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm almost there. Like I'm experiencing it. And, and to people who weren't there, that's going to sound weird. And I get it because it was weird in the sense that it was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't normal. It wasn't something that I experienced, you know, uh, every, every morning or even once a week. It was, it was something I will never forget for the rest of my life. Man, just listening to you talk, I, I could sit here for the rest of the day and listen to you stumble over words because it just is doing (laughs) so much for my soul right now. And, I forgot to mention Sadie and Christian when I was talking about all the folks on the Zoom call the other day, but Sadie said, as we were talking about it, she said, I just expected at any minute to see an angel or 
you know, yeah. she says, I, we, we were just so close that I just expected it at any second. And, you know, I, I know there's some people listening right now that know exactly what we're talking about. There are probably people listening right now that are not quite sure. And then I would guess there'd be a few people listening right now that are a little bit anti. And mm-hmm. there were a lot of people anti Asbury. There's a lot of skepticism in our world right now. Everything isn't perfect, obviously. And, mm-hmm. you know, Asbury ends and it seems like all the controversy begins. And I know you were a mm-hmm. part of Unite Auburn a few months ago and then a part of Unite FSU the other night. And, you know, thousands of students gather, hundreds of people get saved, people get baptized on the spot. And, you know, immediately it ends and controversy begins. And there's all these mm-hmm. conversations and debates about spontaneous baptism. And is that something that really is biblical? And is that good pastoral leadership? And we mm-hmm. might be missing the point um, that God is moving. And that mm-hmm. God is stirring. And I'm so glad a friend of mine called me on a whim, really, on a Tuesday in the day and said, hey, let's go to Asbury tonight. And mm-hmm. I looked at my you know, schedule the next day and I had a non-negotiable Wednesday morning, got to be here thing. And I said, OK, but I got to be back. And so we worked it out to you know, get on a flight at five o'clock, get to Kentucky at 630 we had a flight back at 5.15 or 6.15 or something crazy like that. I don't remember. But we spent all night there, and it changed me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh, it marked me. Mm-hmm. And when I left there, JP, um, in February, I just started praying right then for what we were going to experience in the bins. And I was like, dear God, whatever happens— Please, please, please let something like this be a part of it so that every Mm -hmm. person walks out of this stadium and they know God was in that place. Mm -hmm. Not great songs were in that place or great teaching Mm -hmm. or preaching or amazing gathering or tons of people, but God was in that place. And not just some people, everybody knows that God was here. And Mm -hmm. That had already happened at Passion 2024 the day before a few times, and I was already in this zone of going, man, God is in this stuff. He is in this right now. Mm -hmm. We are on his timeline. We are on his agenda. He is marshalling all of the pieces of this towards his conclusion. Mm -hmm. But then that moment happened on Friday, and I was like you back at Asbury again, but I was so grateful um, mm-hmm. And the way you just said that, you said it the other day, but the way you said it um, again, that condensed version of that on a bigger scale that shuts down all the controversy, is it is it production or no production? Mm-hmm. Is it microphones or no microphones? Is it yeah. a you know 700 person chapel or is it a 70,000 person football stadium? Is it a yeah. worship leader that people know, or is it just someone from the community or a student from the campus? It's like, who cares? None yeah. of that matters. You missed the point absolutely and completely if that's your point of view. And the point of view is that God does what he wants, when he wants, where he wants, and through whomever he wants, and whatever time he has to do it in. And if he's got a week, he can change your life in a week. But if he's got five seconds on a subway in a fleeting conversation, he can change your life in five seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel really done with all that other stuff you were saying. I mean, I I, I became a Christian really in, in, a, um, in, in a lot of ways, almost like a cessationist culture. And, um, and, it, and it was, it was, I'm really thankful. I mean, it was Bible teaching. Bible centered, um, you know, and, and it, and it wasn't true cessationism, but it was, but we didn't think a lot, or at least I didn't, I shouldn't say we, I didn't, um, and it may have just been on me, my misunderstanding, but I didn't think a lot about the work of the spirit and what he does and the miraculous nature of God and what he wants for today. And, and what I, what it did in my own heart is it, um, it created something that I hate or strongly dislike in others, which is a critical spirit and a cynicism. And I justified it as um, discernment. You know, that's a spiritual godly (laughs) word. I'm being discerning. I'm guarding my doctrine carefully, you know, and it, and it, and what it did is it, 
it allowed me to, it put me on an island and allowed me to look out on the island and to say, you know, I'm right. And there's a lot of people who are getting it yeah. wrong. And, um, and I'm not saying, I mean, like we should be discerning. And so I want to be careful how I communicate this. Like we should be discerning. And there are things in the church that the enemy is certainly working through and, and all, all kinds of things that he's doing to divide us. But I'm just, I don't understand why we get so critical of a, of a clear and obvious work of God. And, um, and that's what I experienced there. And, you know, and it's like, I, I think I said this before with you is like, it's interesting with, I remember somebody coming, I, I, I pastored a really large church and, and relatively speaking, that's not a flex. I, 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 I inherited it. And, uh, and, um, and and someone said, yeah, y'all are big, but do you make disciples? Insinuating, well, if you're big, you can't make yeah. disciples. Like, clearly, that's a, uh, that's impossible. And I remember walking away from that almost like, hey, that's like something I would say. And even like my, my criticism, un, unaware, I never spoke it to anybody. I never said it to someone. But from afar with passion, I'm like, yeah, that's really big. But like, what what's really happening there? And I think getting again, that's just that was hidden in my heart that I didn't even know it was there until I, I I stepped in the movement and got to experience it with you know with my own eyes for the first time. I'm like, oh, what's happening there is people are seeing God. Saints are being equipped by His Word. Hearts are being stirred. Mm-hmm. Affections are being stirred for Christ Jesus. People are looking at the cross and understanding that their sins are paid for, and they're crossing over from death to life, surrendering their life to Jesus Christ, and they're going to be in heaven because of it. Like one of the most glorious works of God I've ever seen and experienced on earth is happening there. And um, man, it's just a good time to say thank you. <laughs> thank you so much just for just for being used by him and letting me, you know, play along and be a part and it, it is i'll never be the same pastor louis i will never ever be the wow. same yeah same grateful thank you lord uh, i you mentioned when you got saved and it hasn't been terribly long ago and i love that jp because in every time i've heard you teach some way you've referenced your past person and uh mm. and kind of the net takeaway for me is that uh you're saying I've done it all. I've been there. Yeah. It wasn't working for me. And yeah. I think this is the linchpin of the potential explosion of faith and of church right now is a yeah. world and a generation coming to the honest realization that what I'm doing is not working for me right now. I need something yeah. different. And it might not be the old way and what they thought church was or maybe what church has been projected to be. But they yeah. know they need something, and in that little opening, we have the opportunity to talk about Jesus. Uh, how 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 do you process that coming out of the old world and into the new world? Yeah, I don't I don't think I was aware of my need, and so I I want to be clear for the listener that my brokenness didn't look like brokenness, and so what it looked like was a different suit for every day of the week, uh, a penthouse condo in uptown you know, bottle service at the club, um, different watches, you know, for depending on the day of the week, um, large commission checks, a, a Jaguar S type. Um, you know, it just, it, it, that, that was my, that was my life then. And so it was like the world. And I, I felt like I was really good at the world. I grew up relatively poor in the country, you know, on a farm. And when I saw the world and the, the lights and the, the buildings and just everything. I thought, man, I want that. And I just grabbed a hold as fast as I could. And I was at a, a club 21 years ago and someone invited me to church. And, you know, I grew up in church, went to a church school for nine years, but I hadn't been in a while. And I went hungover and I smelled like smoke from the night before, you know, just loving the party. I had VIP at a, at a club in town. And, uh, and I went and I just started wrestling with like, you know, if there's a God, <laughs> I better figure that out, you know, and I kind of my bias was against Christianity. So as I began to explore religions and and so I say that because it's like I didn't know that what I had wasn't working until I had something so much better, you know, more than I could ask for or imagine in Christ, which was just true. And so kind of to go back to where to that to that brief conversation where we started, 
is like, I just realized like most of us aren't on a truth journey. Like most of us are, are trying to find what's going to bring momentary happiness. We're trying to scrape together these, these trinkets of temporary pleasures and, and God all the while is standing right there saying, I am him. Like wow. I am where pleasure is ultimately found. And I desire a relationship with you much more than you desire a relationship mm-hmm. with me. And I've done the work on your behalf to have a relationship with you. I've allowed my son, Jesus Christ, to die on your behalf to pay for your sins so that you don't have to pay for your sins and you can be with me forever and ever and ever, not as a slave, not as an employee, but as a child, my adopted child, as an heir to my kingdom. And, and I think when I realized that that was true, I began to, I looked at those, those things that, that even sound like a flex, like, trinkets of watches and in a, in a car and a condo it's like it's like man that is dust mm. you know all the, the building's gonna fall over the car I mean it's not even running anymore it's it's in a junkyard somewhere the the watches the batteries died long ago and and they're you know I'm, I'm lost them and who knows what and and here we are it's like man Jesus you know God his word and his people these are the only things that wow. last forever and so I think I think that's what I would say to that person is it is, even if you're listening and what you have isn't bad by your own estimation, what I'm telling you is in Jesus Christ, there's something infinitely better to, than the very best thing you've ever wow. had. And to the person who's listening, who does feel empty, who is struggling, who does feel like a dog to his vomit, you keep returning to the same sins of pornography or, or sexual sins or drunkenness or vaping or material sins of greed or just going back to Amazon, trying to fill some eternal void in your heart with stuff and significance. I'm telling you, God's right there and he's inviting you into a relationship with him and he's paid the price for you to have a relationship with him. And you just have to say, God, I'm so tired of running from you. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. Would you please entrust to me your Holy Spirit and show me how to live in this world until I'm home with you? And he will gladly answer that prayer. Wow. So beautiful. I know that uh, a lot of people are in your wake, JP. Uh, the Friday Q&A is one of your hallmarks right now. The Becoming Something podcast, obviously, is a lot of buzz as well. But the Friday Q&A, um, lots of folks are leaning in with you. What is that teaching you about Gen Z or about people in general? And um, mm. as you know, a lot of leaders probably listening to us today, what do you think are some of the the notes that we should be playing or not playing based on what you're learning and what you're seeing? Yeah, well, I've, I've received, I think you're, you kind of say those things, and I've received much more than I've given to that because it really is a master class every Friday to watch what thousands of, of the next generation, the questions they're asking. And, 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 and a big takeaway right now is... Uh, you know, a little bit of a theme at this point of of just the untrusting nature of them, where they're at, the world that they grew up in. Uh, as they move around, there's the material and there's the immaterial. There's the the things of this world, and then the things of the kingdom. And they're playing a game of of what can I trust? And I think this, Pastor Louis, I think this is a little bit the experiment that we're all in. You know, there's an enemy here, yeah. uh, Satan, and uh, and then there's a God, the Creator of of all things. And we're we're in the game of who can I trust? And there's there really is there's the things of God and there's the things of this world and there's nothing else. You know, it's just like that's it's like we're either going to worship the enemy by simply worshiping ourselves or this earth or or trinkets and treasures here, or we're going to worship the Creator God of, of heavens and the earth. And so I what I see in those questions is that theme of people just looking for hope. And 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 not finding it in the temporary pleasures, I see a lot of hurt, uh, a lot of confusion around relationships. I mean, there's so many questions just around breakups and and dating and sex, and just people are struggling trying to find a guide. You know, they they just want a guide. Like, hey, can you help me? You know, and, and if they were to say it, they would say, you know, get what I want. But I think. I don't even know that that for a lot of them, they've started with the right desire. Yeah. And, you know, C.S. Lewis says, that, you know, our desires for pleasure are not too strong, but but not strong enough because we're like children satisfied, you know, playing with mud pies when a holiday at sea is around the corner. 
And that really does capture um, so much of what I see in a generation is we're we're being we're we're attempting to be satisfied with the temporary pleasures of this world rather than the ones the the supernatural ones of God. And that's you know what you and I both expressed a moment ago. Uh, what we experienced at Passion is it's it's this thing. Hey, I don't want to leave this. I don't want to leave this. I've never experienced that in anything worldly. You know, and I and I have. You're right. I mean, I have chased some highs. I mean, I've I've done coke and MDMA and and uh, smoked weed and and drank a lot of alcohol, and and have had a lot of sex, and I've never experienced anything where it's like I I don't want anything else but this right here. I just want to stay in this moment right here, and I've only experienced that in in my savior, Jesus Christ. How do you steward that JP? I mean, you have uh, gatherings coming up uh, at church in a few days and then a few days after that. And a few days after that, you got people coming through the door who don't know anything about anything. You got people coming through the door who feel like they're owners of the place and uh, they're just renting it to you for a while. <laughs> They've been through the motions a lot. And yet we've tasted and we've seen that if you make space, God will fill it. And if you mm -hmm. don't get too freaked out by the fact that God is mysterious, then he will do things that can't be described by ordinary words. And when I say that, please, I, let me put a little footnote on that. You know, God took some of his followers up the mountain and they saw the transfiguration. They saw the prophet and they saw Moses and Jesus. And it was, it was crazy. And they they heard voices and it, it was a whole scene, but it yeah. wasn't the norm. It wasn't every day. They didn't do that every day as far as we know, and it really wasn't what Jesus came to do. He didn't say, hey, I've come to have, you know, mountaintop experiences and kind of glory. He said he'd come to give his life as a ransom and to send us out in the power of the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel everywhere on earth so that the nations would come to see Jesus, and then he could come back and bring us all into heaven with him. But yet they did mm -hmm. go up that mountain. And I'm sure they tried to explain it to their friends a bunch of different ways. <laughs> and every time they were like, oh, never mind. So now oh, we're man. back at church and we're back in the flow and we're back in the schedule. And you got to talk about a collection of upcoming talks. And how are you stewarding the fact that you know there is potential for the miraculous and the supernatural to be in the mix while still studying hard to preach the word only, not opinions and not experiences, and leading mm -hmm. people to Jesus, not to experiences and encounters, mm -hmm. how are you stewarding that? It's just motivated me even more. And so as, as awesome, as awesome, oh man, as awesome as that was, and I, I can see it, man. I, it's the first thing I did when I got back is I went on the on the passion stream and I registered and I, I didn't go to my talk, you know, I didn't go, I just went straight to that moment. I was like, I just got to experience that again. And, uh, and, and you guys have released it, right? And now yeah, it's out it, everywhere it's now, Agnes Day, the whole, whole yeah. version of it. And so I just had to go ex experience it again. And, and as awesome as it was, and like, and hear me, and, and if I'm, if I'm misspeaking, correct me, as awesome as it was, I think it's just the tip of the mm. iceberg. I, I mean, I think it is just a glimpse, a commercial. It's a commercial. It's the trailer. It's the movie trailer. And we haven't seen the movie yet. It was just the trailer of what is to come. And so it's, you know, it, it's kind of the way that I think about the gospel. We, we struggle so much, we humans, um, Christ followers, to share the gospel. But we don't, we don't hesitate to share our favorite Mexican place, you know, or, or restaurant, our favorite yeah. ice cream restaurant. Like we, we don't hesitate to share our favorite brands. And, um, and yet this Jesus who set us free for eternity and invites us into paradise forever and ever and ever and ever and ever with God. I mean, we, we struggle with, and I've just kind of gotten over that a little bit and just realized it is good news. And, um, and so when I experienced that moment there, 
I'm like, hey, this is available to us. God, God wants to do that more than I want him to do that. And I don't know when he's going to do it again, Pastor Louie. Mm-hmm. It might be this Sunday at Harris Creek. It might be this Sunday at Passion City yeah. Church. I don't know when he's going to do it again. But when he does it again, I want. I just want to make sure my heart is ready and willing that my presence is looking for his presence. And I'm, I'm looking to be where he is. And I'm looking to be a part of whatever it is he's doing as the eyes of the Lord go to and fro. And he's looking for hearts fully available to him, fully devoted to him. I hope that he would see mine as one of those. And and the the sad news is there's far too many days strung together where that's not the case or that that I'm I'm going through a mundane quiet time or I'm I'm searching for the experience or hoping for the emotions. And in reality, I just sense, you know, and I'm reminded from our time together that God is in the business of doing things, bigger things than we can ask for or imagine all the time. And he is he surprises us in a in a delightful way, in the best kind of way. And so I, I, you know, it's a little bit of an oxymoron, but what that does is it just motivates me to be ready yeah. to be surprised. And so I'm sitting here ready and willing to be surprised by God in the best kind of way. I think that uh, preparation allows for spontaneity and maybe the best and healthiest way. So I'm working really hard and we're working really hard on uh putting a journey together for our house and our church on Sunday where people can encounter Jesus and uh, encounter his word and give it an, an, uh, give them an opportunity to be grateful and express that in corporate worship to him. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm with you and I'm just like, Lord, we, we, we've had a lot of sermons and a lot of songs over time. We need you. And yeah. um, I don't Man, devalue so the sermon. I don't devalue the song, but um, we need him. And I said this yeah. the other day, but I think for me, you know, passion, uh, we put so much into it. You, you don't, you know, fill a football stadium without giving a hundred thousand percent of your physical, spiritual, and mental, emotional, financial. It just takes everything that you've got and a team, everything that they've got. And it was, you know, pretty epic on a lot of levels. But if God hadn't stirred, yeah. then I think it would have been for me a bust. I'm 66 years old and I've been to a lot yeah. of things in life and I preached in a few stadiums by the grace of God and preached in that one a couple of times. And uh, it, I just need more than that. And it, yeah. it, would, it wouldn't have been everything that I had hoped and prayed and dreamed for if there hadn't been that other. So praise God for it. Yeah. Hey, I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, I wish we could talk Anything. all day. I, I love uh, talking to you and listening to you talk so much, and I know Likewise. other people do, and I mentioned it already, but uh, Becoming Something is uh, JP's podcast, and you can track along and jump onto a Friday Q&A with him on uh, Instagram, and you'll, you'll love it. But uh, this podcast is called The Passion and Purpose Podcast. And that, some of that springs out of a talk that I did a long time ago called Passion, Purpose, and Designer Genes. It was at a passion event a long, long time ago. But when you Love think it. about passion and purpose, especially mm-hmm. talking to this emerging generation and to leaders that are on board, talk a little bit about passion and purpose from your point of view. Yeah. When I think about those two words, um, an, another a third word comes to mind, and it's um, it's the word calling. And so uh, I think about in my in my mind, I, I see a Venn diagram that is 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 passion, um, you know, experience and then opportunity. And the, the overlap there in the middle is is calling. And I think a lot of people are concerned about their about the future. And I don't mean that in the generic sense, like what's going to happen, wars and rumors of wars. I mean, in the very yeah. personal sense, who am I going to marry? Where am I going to school? What is my degree going to be? Should I continue? Should I drop the class? What am I going to do for a living? How much am I going to make? What city am I going to live in? You know, all of those kinds of things. Like, what is my future? And, um, you know, Ephesians 2.10 is true, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he's prepared in advance for us to do. And, and so as you pursue God, as you, Matthew 6, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, trusting him for everything else, all these other things will be added. As you walk in faithfulness, as you live out your passion, as you make Christ your, your biggest passion, then you walk in your purpose and then you find your future. You walk in the opportunities that God 
has prepared in advance for you to walk in. He's going to lead you in and through that. And then and then all those questions get answered, you know, as you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all the other stuff is then added in. And so as I think about uh, passion and purpose, I mean, that's just where my mind goes is a lot of people wondering right now, what is my calling? What is my calling? I would say walk in your passion on purpose and you will find your calling. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I wish that I had gotten um, on board earlier in my life with the reality that Paul talks about in Colossians 3, where he says, and whatever you do, in word yeah. or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, giving yeah. thanks to God the Father through him. And, you know, I was stuck for a while, JP, on what am I going to do? And is it going to be the right thing? And am I going to be in the will of God? And then they made it even more complicated. These guys would come to our church and talk about yeah. being in the center of the will of God. And you're like, oh, my word, yeah. I got to get in God's will. Now I got to get in the center of God's will. Yeah. And then I realized at some point that, you know, my mission on earth is to give glory to God. And I can do that as a banker or a broker or a pastor or a teacher or a mother or a baker or a shop owner. I can give God glory by doing well, whatever it is he's yeah. gifted me to do. And so whatever you do, whether in word yeah. or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to put the scripture mm -hmm. verse on the bottom of the cup, but if you do in and out, thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah. But yeah. the way you run your business, the way you make the hamburgers, the way you source your product, the way you treat your staff, the way you go about investing and reinvesting your profits, that's how, as a chain of restaurants who serve people hamburgers and fries all day, give yeah. glory to God, and everybody can do that. Thank you so much yeah. for time today, and Man. thank you so much yeah. for um, adorning my credenza with a, <laughs> I want to say, at least yeah. a hundred-year-old uh, Sputnik yeah. um, Russian cosmonaut lamp that got retrofitted yeah. in Waco, Texas by my yeah. good friend so that I can plug it into the wall in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. I love you too. I I, I want to uh, end with paying you this compliment of just um, thank you for um, thank you for being a God fearing man and and someone is an as an example to me who is pursuing holiness. I, I knew you were were a, a great person from afar, but as we got closer, um, you know the 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 cruise has been better than the brochure. And, um, and, you know, and I, I think so many people go to passion and they experience, you know, the, the music and just the level of excellence. I've never in my entire life seen something so well planned and held open handed where you, you just said, Hey, this God is going to do what he wants to do, where he wants to do, when he wants to do it with, to whom, through whom he ever wants to do it through. And, and you, everything was just held so open handed and, um, and, and the moments in the behind the stage of communion and prayer and just begging God to do whatever it is that he desires to do and that we wouldn't get in the way of that. I just, I just thank you. Thank you for all that, for all the things that you see, but for so many of the things that people don't see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're kind. Praise God. He's been good to us. And JP, I'm so glad he's let us do it together. Pumped that uh, real soon now you're going to be at Speak Conference. Um, yeah, let's because go. Because I love the way you communicate. I love the tone, the pace and the content. Uh, your message at Passion um, on Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life, that's available somewhere online. You can find it, I'm sure. But I would encourage everyone mm -hmm. to listen to that talk and look forward to seeing you at Speak Conference in just uh, a little bit now. Have a great day. Thanks yeah, for man. jumping on today. You too. Thank you so much, Pastor.